Hello, welcome to Backyard Science. I'm Rick. I'm Ed. And this is Scott. Yellow. And today we're going to be playing with air pressure. Did you know, you can't break a pencil like that? That's rubbish. I can break a pencil with a bin bag. That's BS. I'll show you. Show me. All right. Right, for so those interested, here's how this works. First we have our surface, and here's our pencil. You're going to have to pretend that's a pencil for me. Next, we place our bin liner over the pencil. Now, there's nothing special about the liner itself, but the larger surface area allows us for a greater amount of air pressure to go across the entire thing. When Ricky plays Pretend Karate Master, the back of the liner has a low pressure zone, and attempting to lift it from the force of his hand creates a vacuum, which holds the pencil down with around a ton of force. Because of this, rather than lifting the bin liner, the pencil snaps. What is pressure? Well, the equation for pressure is pressure equals force over area. And why is there a force involved? There's a force involved because molecules of the fluid are hitting the container the fluid is in. As molecules are always moving, they're always going to be bouncing off each other and colliding with the walls of the container. However, statistically, they collide with the walls of the container equally in every direction, up, down, side to side. This means that you don't get containers randomly jumping around the room but you do get a constant amount of force from these collisions. An everyday example of pressure and pressure changes is breathing. You know, how do you get the air from outside your lungs to inside your lungs? Fluids will always move from a higher pressure to a lower pressure. As the body expands your lungs, the volume of your lungs increases. This means the pressure decreases, so the higher pressure air from outside rushes into your lungs. This is similar when you breathe out, but the exact opposite. Your body decreases the volume inside your lungs, creating a higher pressure inside your lungs than outside. This forces air out of your mouth, equalising the pressure. Let's go outside for some more hands-on science. So now that we're outside, one example of pressure is everyone's favourite, Mentos and Coke. But for this, we're going to need our science stuff. Ta-da! You've probably all seen this one a lot, but here's the lowdown. When the Mentos is dropped into the coke, the rough surface of the Mentos causes a large release of carbon dioxide in the form of bubbles. This increases the pressure within the bottle, and the liquid is displaced from the only available exit. If you want to know more about the specifics, we've included a link to a New Scientist article below. So in this clip, we're experimenting as to whether Mentos really are the best sweets to use. In the two bottles on the left, we're using a different sweet with the same surface area. The bottle on the right contains our fruit mento control. Next up we're going to show another example of pressure using a modified lighter. I should really be holding the lighter. Next up is another demonstration of pressure using a lighter. Now we've modified this one slightly, so it's potentially a little bit more dangerous. This means you should be taking appropriate precautions such as safety glasses and a friend stood by with a large bucket of water. Hello! You know, just in case.
Here we are once more at the studio, with our modified lighter. We've injected this with a pressurised can to make sure that the interior pressure is at its maximum. When we pull the trigger on the device, the lighter fluid is forced out from the high interior pressure to the low external pressure, causing it to propel outwards. All that's left after that is the addition of a little spark and boom, instant flamethrower. Thank you very much for watching Backyard Science. Please like and subscribe and tune in next time for more Backyard Science. Science done! Thank <laughs> you.